Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. One of my recent YouTube videos, I was asked in the comments, what do you do when you're wrong? And I thought it'd be great to record a separate video talking about really thinking about stops, right? How do you exit a position or a uh, an idea that you initiate? What would the evidence need to be or how would you be able to tell that that position is no longer appropriate? It's correct. So today we'll talk about what do you do when you're wrong? So in my years in the financial industry, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of successful traders and investors and uh, had the opportunity to pick their brain in terms of what they use to manage risk, right? And particularly how you, how, what the chart needs to tell you uh, to, uh, to convince you that you're wrong. And I would argue that one of the easier things to do is learn how to analyze charts. One of the more difficult things to do is actually do what the chart tells you to do. And that for a lot of investors and a lot of traders is the game. Before we get to the chart here, by the way, if you like the sort of thinking about technical analysis, behavioral finance, and investor psychology, if you like all that stuff, won't you subscribe to my channel? Also, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. We'd very much appreciate that back. Finally, put a comment below. What's your favorite way to manage risk and think about trailing stops or some other exit strategy? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get to the chart here. So we are looking at the chart of Apple. I just wanted to pick a stock we're all kind of familiar with. And the assumption we're going to make is let's assume that you initiate a long position today at the close. Now, this is not a recommendation to do so. This is no particular commentary on Apple. I was just looking for a stock that had had a pretty good rally. It's overall in an uptrend, pulled back a little bit and bounced today. So it might, might make sense for some reason that you uh, that you could consider this uh, a, a hypothetical long position. So what would you need to see to tell you that you were wrong? So the way that I would generally describe uh, stops or exit strategies from a technical perspective is one of three ways. Number one, a correction in price. Number two, a correction in time. And number three, something a little more exotic, something based on maybe volatility. Now, most things can be based into one of those things, right? There's something that happens either uh, on price, there's a price movement that tells you you're wrong, or time. There's just a certain amount of time and you learn that you're incorrect. And so to be honest with you, that's probably the two main categories I would list it in. But there are simplistic ways to do that and then way more advanced ways uh, to do that as well. So let's take a look at the chart of Apple here and let's assume that you put in a long position today. Where would you naturally put a stop based on um, on different uh, different approaches? Well, the first and most simple one is to put some sort of percentage stop, right? The position moves against me. The market moves against my position by X percent. And I would uh, I would get out of that uh, I would get out of that trade. You know, one of the more um, famous versions of this would be uh, William O'Neill, Bill O'Neill, who founded uh, Investors Business Daily. They do a great job at uh, Investors.com, uh, really continuing to promote him and his work. One of his things was a a flat eight um, uh, percent stop. So no matter what you do, no matter what you think, no matter what the chart says or the fundamentals say or the macro thesis is. If you buy something or if you take a position and the market moves against you over 8%, you should exit it. Not think about why, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. It is a flat 8% um, you know, um, uh, exit. Now, why is that helpful? Because it's super simple and it's really easy to follow, right? And there's no guesswork. There's no crazy calculation. It's literally, where did you buy it? take 8% below that and draw a line on your chart. And that's what I would often uh, tell people to do if they follow this strategy. Literally take a little horizontal line like that, save your chart with that particular methodology. And then, you know, I buy here, if the price goes below that line, I'm out. And don't question it, don't think about it and get out. Now, that, the other reason that's helpful besides just that it's simple is the fact that it minimizes your losses or, or it limits your losses, right? You don't have a chance to lose 30, 40, 50% of your investment because you know you're out at 8%. Now, is there a chance that the stock goes down 10% and then rips back to the upside and makes new highs? Absolutely. The thing is, usually if it goes out 8%, it's not done at 8.5%. It usually uh, can go further. I was taught uh, early in my career, all, all large losses begin as small losses. So if you keep your losses small, then you have an opportunity to uh, you know find better opportunities and find somewhere else to go. So the first option is to say very simple, um, you know, value, or in most cases, a percent stop would be the way to do that. Take your entry point, take a percent below there. And again, from a technical perspective, I always find it's great to put a nice horizontal line in a bright color so that anytime you look at that chart, you are always watching that exit point. I've done that with my own uh, positions and my own charts for, uh, for years. Now, 
What you can also do, maybe a more advanced version of that, is look for a particular price level, right? Or a particular um, technical level, right? A price level based on the charts. So looking at the chart, what levels jump out at you? Well, there are a number of things I could think about. First off, we're coming off of a little low here, right? So if I would take, and I'm just going to be drawing and deleting a bunch of lines here, and I hope that's okay with you. But let's assume, um, you know, the low, the most recent swing low. Now, this is a tight stop because we just bounced uh, today as I'm recording this uh, in uh, in late August. So we're just one day off of those lows. But one way to limit your losses is just assume that that most previous swing low is held. As long as we remain above that most recent low, then the trend is still most likely making a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. That is what defines an uptrend. That's how Charles Dow defined an uptrend, The you know, really the... Um, father of technical analysis, if you might call him that, you know, he sort of was, uh, you know, pioneered this idea of trends and the fact that a trend is a pattern of highs and lows and you look at how they're evolving. So as long as we keep making higher highs and higher lows, the trend is in place. So if I find a pullback and we rotate higher, I initiate a position and I use the most recent swing low as a stop. Why that's good is because it will keep a position in place as long as that trend continues. And what you can actually do, and this is a little outside the scope of this video, but if we keep making higher lows, you can pump your stop up to each subsequent higher low. And every time we make a new high and then pull back a little bit, you bump up your stop. You keep locking in more and more paper gains. And when we finally hit that stop, that's how you've locked in all the gains up until that point. And so that's a great approach if you find something like this where you're looking to buy on the dips. That can be a great way to lock in um, those gains and continue to push your stops higher as the uh, as the charts indicate it. Now, you can also do something a little more complicated. So, for example, a Fibonacci retracement, again, a little outside the scope of this video, but I'm thinking that might be another video I put on this channel. A Fibonacci analysis would take the low from mid-June, the high from mid-August, and now I've bought here. As long as we remain above that 38.2% retracement level, according to Fibonacci methodology, this is still an uptrend, right? We can pull back to at least 38 or to up to 38.2%. And this trend is still pretty much uh, overall positive. We break 158, though, all of a sudden this is starting to uh, get into deeper uh, potential support levels and further downside targets. And maybe that's where I'd want to um, uh, get out of a position. Final thing, and from a technical perspective, keeping it pretty simple, will be something like a moving average. The 50-day moving average is often a good um, a, a good stopping point on a, on, a, on a stock or a chart that's been in a nice, consistent uptrend, because that's often where a price will pull back before uh, going higher. I have another uh, couple of videos on the 50-day moving average. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out more about that particular methodology. But in this case, the 200-day moving average is not too far below. It's right above 160. So maybe I initiate a long position here. As long as we hold the 200-day on any pullback, that position is still safe. And you'll find that a lot of times where we go below the 200-day briefly for one day and then bounce right up there. So thinking about that as a potential range of support could be helpful as well. Now, the last thing you can do is get into more complicated things. And, and, and things that would come to mind would be uh, parabolic studies or parabolic systems. That's an indicator designed by Wells Wilder, same person that uh, created RSI and DMI, the ADX line. Uh, he created a uh, trailing stop indicator basically called the parabolic SAR system, SAR standing for stop and reverse. The one I would highlight if you're looking to get into a little more um, you know, a little more uh, nuanced approach would be the chandelier exit strategy. This is an indicator created by Chuck LeBeau, and I'm not sure what year, a number of years ago. It was really popularized in one of uh, Dr. Alexander Elder's books, Trading for a Living, or one of those. I forget which one it was, but uh, Elder talked about the chandelier exits, Chuck LeBeau's work, really. And what it does is it's based on average true range. And if you talk to um, someone, an institutional investor, a, a trader, uh, we think a lot or, or um, you know, it, it, people in that world think a lot more about average true range and volatility because you you realize that it's not just about percent moves. It's more about the volatility. How volatile is this name tend to be? And if you can put your stop based on the average volatility, you're probably going to have a stop that's unique and probably appropriate for that particular chart. So this uses average true range or ATR, which basically looks at the true range, which is the high to low range every day adjusted for any price gaps. And so uh, essentially it's looking at, if I remember right, I'm going into my technical indicator knowledge base here. If I remember, it's looking at a 22 day high and then it's three times the ATR off of that high, right? So if you take the high, 
three times the average true range that puts us a stop down here. And so it updates as the price goes higher because we make a new 22 day high. And so it has to update the stop. So it norm basically it follows the price higher. Every time we make a new high, the stop is going to be bumped up a little bit. And it's going to adjust dynamically based on the volatility. So if the name gets more volatile, the spread is or the the stop is going to widen out a little bit. If it's a little narrower volatility, the stop will come in. So it adjusts itself dynamically based on uh, based on that methodology. And in a downtrend, you'd flip it. You do a short uh, strategy based on the twenty two lows. So this is looking at the um, the uh, chandelier exit. For Apple, using the traditional settings, a 22-day high and a three times ATR stop level. And you can see it gives you a stop for today around 165.70. And that's going to keep updating every day. So if we keep making new highs, the stop goes up there. So those are a number of different ways to think about managing risk based on price. The other type, or maybe that second type, would be um, using something like time. And this is something I learned uh, years ago from Tom DeMarc. He would always have... Uh, signal, something like a TD sequential buy signal, which would be a red 13 on the chart, then you give it a certain number of bars. If I don't see the price move uh, in the direction I'm expecting within 12 price bars, then I exit the position. You call that a time stop, right? If it's not doing what you think within 12 bars, then you just kind of kind of get out. And that's helpful because the idea of a lot of his methodologies and a lot of technical analysis is you're pinpointing a particular time and a particular moment, right? This signal of whatever indicator is giving me a buy signal today based on like MACD or something like that. If after 12 bars, it hasn't done what you think, then it probably wasn't a great signal anyways. And you probably just want to exit out of it uh, anyways and just find a better opportunity that really is more idealized based on the technical approach that you're trying to capture. So those are the general ways I would think about stops, which is, um, you know, based on price or some uh, derivative of price or based on time. The the final comment I will make, and I believe this is attributed to Justin Mame, is he wrote a book called uh, When to Sell or How to Sell. I forget what it's actually called, but a really good book. I read it years ago, but I just think about different exit strategies. And his comment was, if the stock isn't doing what you expect it to do, sell it. And that has been a great quote that has reminded me that, Technical analysis is all about identifying partic particular configurations, particular patterns, and you are buying or selling a particular chart or particular stock based on its chart, based on your um, experience with that particular indicator, based on your knowledge of market dynamics and market history, and a set of patterns that are uh, particular to that moment. If and when the chart tells you it's not working, the most important thing to do is listen to the chart. I'm Dave Keller from Market Misbehavior. This is a brief run through some different ways to admit when you're wrong. If there's one thing I could finish with is the most important thing you can do as an investor is not be right a lot. It's to admit when you're wrong. That is the real uh, opportunity. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up if you could and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Stay safe and be well. We'll talk to you again soon.